Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to share this new country guide with you because I never played in South America before and I really had a lot of fun experimenting with Brazil in the new DLC Trial of Allegiance. Moreover, I was truly amazed by how powerful Brazil can get in time to make a decisive impact in World War II. We are going to challenge Germany and even outperform them in some aspects. Now if that sounds interesting, then this is the right video for you. Before we start, let me just say a couple of things. Now this strategy is consistent, uh, but there are a couple of tricky wars and naval invasions, so make sure to follow it closely. Also, unfortunately, there are a couple of RNG heavy moments, so I would recommend making multiple saves. I will mention all of them in the video in any case. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask, you can do so in the comment section, but I would also recommend joining our Discord to meet our amazing community. Also remember that I always upload the unedited version for my guides. You can find it in the description of the video together with the focus tree and research priorities. Finally, if you have been following the channel and enjoying my content, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow faster, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and make even more content for you guys. Now that's really all for the introduction, so let's start with the initial setup for Brazil. If you're watching the unedited version, mind that I will stop from time to time because I'm checking my own uh, spreadsheet and uh, you can access it by purchasing a tier 2 membership to the channel. And I will need to check my notes from time to time as well. Now, in terms of uh, buildings, we are going to build uh, military factories uh, right away from the beginning. We are not going to bother building infrastructures and we are going to build a military... So we are going to build military factories in uh, Rio Grande do Sul and Sao Paulo. It's not worth, in my opinion, building uh, infrastructures because uh, we don't have enough slots uh, to make uh, uh, really use of it uh, or to get, get the most out of it. In terms of uh, military production, first of all, we're going to assign our MIOs and then we're going to increase the production of uh, uh, basic infantry equipment uh, to four and we're going to add uh, towered artillery and trucks uh, for the next few factories that we're going to unlock. We also need to remember to import uh, some steel from the United States. Now, in terms of dockyards, we are not going to do anything with them right away, but we will, but we will use them in a bit. I will show you how. In order to do so, we need to merge our navy and we need to start uh, training it uh, from the very beginning. In terms of our army, I will split them into two groups and uh, I will assign them to a marshal. For the marshal, I usually use uh, Rondon. And for the two groups, we use Eurico and Mascareñas. We're going to assign uh, Mascareñas uh, to the border with uh, Uruguay, an offensive border like this. And we're going to use uh, Eurico for a naval invasion of uh, Uruguay. We're going to plan it in uh, this way. So one division here, two divisions to Montevideo and one division right here. Now this is one of the RNG heavy moments, uh, the invasion of uh, Uruguay. But we'll talk about it uh, in a little bit. At this point I would also increase the motorization priority to maximum and I would also start training our army. This is not particularly relevant but you can also send your very bad planes, uh, carrier planes there and train them too. And with this, uh, our initial setup is done. I would save the game at this point, uh, just in, ca in case you need to reload. Uh, you don't need to do this again. Keep in mind one thing. Uruguay, at some point, uh, will uh, receive an ultimatum from us. Uh, it's through a focus. Uh, this one here, in particular. And uh, there is a chance that they accept. Most of the time, in my experience, they accept. So you peacefully annex them. Sometimes they refuse, and you need to declare war to them. And you need to declare war on them. And in that case, uh, there is also a chance that Argentina joins the war against you. Now, that's one of the RNG moments, but uh, it will be decided from the very beginning of the game. So even if you reload this save, uh, it's already determined uh, in the seed of this run uh, whether Uruguay accepts or not. So uh, keep in mind that if you want them to accept, or if you prefer them to refuse, uh, you will need to start a new game. Reloading this save will not be enough.
Okay, now we can start at speed 4. We don't have a lot to do early in the game, but we need to keep an eye on our Navy experience because when we get to 5, we're going to use it for something. We got to 5, and that's how we are going to use our dockyards. We're going to build some early heavy ships, and we're going to make the cheapest possible design, which is this one. Now, our purpose is to produce one or two in time for World War II. Oh, not, sorry, not convoys. So we're going to assign all of our dockyards to it. Uh, right now it says we will get it in April 1940, which is a bit later. But as we proceed through the game, uh, this will become uh, uh, a lot faster and we'll also unlock some extra dockyards. So we will get about two of them in time for the war. Uh, now, I don't usually engage much, much, I don't usually engage much in uh, naval warfare. And we are not going to do that now as well. But this kind of ship, this design in particular, is the best one to achieve uh, naval superiority. This is the cheapest uh, and best uh, ship uh, for naval superiority. We need to adjust the trade again. And at this point I usually keep training the navy until they get to regular trained... Or sorry, to trained level. But as we get uh, our first focus done, uh, we need to pick uh, the Political Fox Advisor. So we're going to do that. Now, once the Navy is uh, trained to trained, uh, we are going to stop training them. And we're going to send them all here, ready for the invasion of uh, Uruguay. Next, uh, we need to wait for 80 political power for the next uh, advisor. Alright, perfect. At 80 political power, we're going to pick the Distinguished Diplomat. Now, at this point, the modernist architect offer, offer great offers some great value because of construction speed and research speed but we really need a lot of political power with uh, uh, fascist brazil so that seven percent is going to be very important for us even though we don't care about anything else that this guy is giving us Okay, at 120 political power, we are going to pick the fascist militarist. This guy gives some great, great bonuses. As soon as this focus is uh, completed, uh, we will automatically turn into a fascist country, which means we can also pick a war economy right away.
In terms of MIOs, I would suggest uh, this priority here for infantry equipment. And at 50 political power, we can pick the industrial concern. Uh, we don't really build civilian factories, but we can use it for the industrial research speed. Now, as soon as this focus is completed, uh, we need to... We need to start using these decisions. It's very important not to forget them. I did it too many times. And I would start from uh, Pernambuco because it has the most uh, construction slots. But eventually we will get all of them. Now we only have 50 days left on uh, the mission uh, before we fail it. Uh, but each one of these decision decisions will increase uh, the amount of time. So we are fine as long as we don't forget about it. Now each decision also gives us some uh, army experience and after the second one is completed we can pick uh, a political loyalty. There we go, so we completed the second mission, we can now go into the spirits and pick political loyalty which will increase our stability a little bit. Okay, now before picking the Uruguay Ultimatum uh, focus, I would suggest making a save. That is because, uh, as I said, you cannot change the outcome. If Uruguay is uh, set, uh, if Uruguay is set uh, to refuse, uh, they will refuse even if you reload. Uh, and if they accept, they will accept even if you, if you reload. However, there is a bug in the game. Sometimes they refuse, uh, you declare war on them, and then suddenly you lose 30% uh, uh, of your base value for war support uh, and stability and that's not cool we cannot accept that that seems to be fixed uh, by reloading this save and trying again if you're playing on iron man and that happens unfortunately you will need to restart the run because that's just too bad there is absolutely no reason for it uh, and uh, just to be clear it is the base value that decreases uh, not the actual value it's normal to decrease the actual value when you're in a in an offensive war but the va base value should not decrease so i will make a save now And then we can pick uh, the focus and see what happens. Do not forget the decisions here. Okay, this is actually the best case scenario in my opinion, uh, because uh, it makes the run a bit easier. They accepted, so we will not encounter that issue about uh, the stability drop. Uh, now, what this changes is also how we play with Argentina, because uh, when they refuse, you need to invade them, and usually Argentina gets a claim on you, and then you will need to fight an early war against Argentina. Now, if that's the case uh, for you, that's absolutely fine, you can win the early war against Argentina by using the same strategy I will show you in a bit uh, with our fight uh, against Argentina. You will have less divisions if you fight now, they will have less divisions, but the overall strategy remains exactly the same. So in this case, uh, we are going to go with the normal strategy. This is also the most common, so that's pretty good. Now, in either case, once you take uh, Uruguay, you want to change uh, the occupation law to local police force and the uh, territory management garrison to uh, Divisao do Cavalaria. I surely didn't... Uh, Cavalaria, maybe I pronounced that correctly. 
I don't know, you, uh, my Brazilian viewers, uh, you can judge my pronunciation. Shouldn't be as bad as the German one. I studied Spanish, but not Portuguese. Uh, okay, uh, we are also going to merge our fleet uh, in uh, Montevideo. And then we also need uh, to start fabricating a claim on Argentina immediately. We're going to do that. Now, at this point, we're also going to start using our political power for the integralist rallies. Uh, and we're going to start doing that uh, from uh, the areas that we just conquered here in the south. We should soon get another one here. But meanwhile, we can continue up there. Oh yeah, by the way, we're also going to merge our army, uh, all of the divisions into one army, and we're going to prepare them at the border with Argentina, with an offensive line covering this area here. We just want them to get the bonus, the offensive bonus, so something like this uh, should be good. And we can also start training them. Okay, when we get uh, free civilian factories, uh, we're just going to build uh, more military factories in all of our 60% or more, the highest possible available uh, provinces. And that's what we're going to do for the rest of the game. So I will not mention this anymore. Whenever you have free, uh, free civilian factories, just build more military factories in the highest possible provinces. We're also going to change uh, the production slightly. We're going to bring the infantry equipment uh, to 9. The support equipment uh, to 2 and uh, the artillery to 2. Of course we need to adjust uh, the trade as well. At the same time, as soon as we complete uh, this focus, uh, we can stop uh, importing entirely. Because now we have enough uh, steel. Now it's very important to pick the last uh, mission against the Kangasso. Okay, and we finally got rid of the Kangasso, which is also giving us some nice uh, base stability, political power and army experience. We are going to use the army experience right away to pick the professional officer corps. We 
We're also going to change our infantry division. We're going to change it to my offensive division, gradually. I'm going to change the icon as well. But most importantly, we need to add uh, the uh, another infantry battalion to them. And apparently they changed something in the very last update because they didn't have uh, support artillery before, but now they do, so we don't need to add it. But uh, yeah, we also used to have to add uh, a support artillery battalion to them. Next, uh, we are also going to change all of our divisions to offensive. Okay, as soon as we get to 20 command power, we're also going to pick uh, the army defense expert. Now, from now on, we're going to use our political power to recruit integralist militias everywhere, starting from the areas which are closer, closer to the border with uh, Argentina. So we start from here. Now with these new divisions, so we are going to create a new army and we are going to assign them to the general who has the trait, Militia Officer. We're going to assign this uh, general to the same marshal and we are going to assign these militias to the northern part of the border around here. We also want them to be trained as level. If they are already trained you don't need to train them more but you can do that as well while waiting for the new ones. Yeah, see, we need to train them because uh, they get some additional equipment, uh, so they will uh, go down to green. We really don't want them. We really don't want them to be green experience, so we want them to be at trained level. Posição. Okay, we got our justification on Argentina. Around this time, you should have about four or five uh, militias. And we want to start the war against Argentina as soon as possible. So, this is another good time to make a save. Because this can be a tricky war to fight.
At this point, we're also going to stop uh, recruiting new militias. Uh, again, if you have four or five, uh, that's, uh, that's right. And we're going to start saving some uh, political power. Going to decrease the speed uh, because uh, this is a very important uh, war, a very important moment. Uh, now, the first push is quite decisive in the sense that what we want to do is uh, we want to kill this guy and we want to encircle these two divisions. Uh, Argentina doesn't have a lot of divisions, so killing two of them at the very beginning of the war is going to be decisive for us. Before we do that, we're also going to stop training our divisions. We can maybe train these guys a little bit more since they are in the north, uh, but just remember to stop training them and then we're going to give uh, offensive doctrine uh, to our marshal before we start uh, the uh, offensive if you're following my spreadsheet i made a separate uh, uh, let's say if you're following my spreadsheet if you're following my spreadsheet, I added at the bottom of the list of focuses and researches some instructions on how to fight the war against Argentina early and late. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. We can assign our planes, they are not going to do much, but it's better than nothing. And then what we want, what we want to do is we want to push here immediately. And we want to use uh, at least four divisions to push here. Now, we want to make sure that these guys do not reinforce and that nobody gets there from here. So we need to pay attention to what Argentina is doing. Keep an eye on them and make sure that they are not able to reinforce uh, this guy. So they are moving here, but it doesn't look like they are moving in this direction, so we are fine. Okay, now here everybody's trained. I'm happy with this. I will stop uh, training our militias. And since we are almost done here, I will start pushing the two divisions up in uh, Posadas. Don't do it too soon, otherwise they will retreat in here and you cannot uh, prevent that from happening. Now, this is looking good already. We got uh, the first encirclement done. Now, we really want to kill those divisions, but these guys should be able to do it. So, in here, it's better to keep the push going. We want to take this area because there is, there is a supply hub in here. Again, if we can stop their reinforcements, that's going to be helpful. By the way, we can also pick our first uh, Doctrine. We're going to pick Superior Firepower, that's going to help. And we're also going to pick uh, the Suppressive Barrage as our favorite uh, tactic. Okay, I can see that they are wanting to reinforce here, and uh, we're not happy with that, so we're going to try to stop them. Now, this war requires a little bit of uh, micromanagement, as you're seeing. Uh, you can probably do it without micromanagement, without micromanaging, but uh, it can become a bit of a struggle and a bit of a long war, and we really don't want that as Brazil. If we can capitulate Argentina, Argenti if we can capitulate Argentina fast. That's going to be extremely beneficial for us. Okay. 
everything is looking good we got uh, this uh, supply hub now they will struggle a bit for supplies which is very good for us we want to keep pushing ideally we want to push all the way to rosario Of course, as soon as we are done with this encirclement, we'll free a lot of divisions, we'll make things uh, a lot easier. And as, was, and as I was mentioning earlier, if you're fighting Argentina early, if uh, Uruguay refused uh, and Argentina joined the war, the strategy is basically the same, just with less divisions on both, uh, both sides. Okay, it's looking very good. After Posadas is done, I would uh, rearrange uh, the militias uh, to cover this uh, front here. Uh, we want to free as much as possible our offensive divisions uh, to focus on the important part that we need to push, which is uh, the area of uh, Buenos Aires. We're not going to push much uh, with militias, we just want them to keep uh, their divisions busy. Okay, and let's keep going here. Looking very good. We can start uh, attacking here as well. Make sure these guys cannot move and as we start fighting in this uh, phase of the war it's also a good time to start using our fleet i put them on invasion support uh, we cannot get the green sea but we can get some uh, support for our divisions when fighting in the, in this area as you can see every bonus counts so it's pretty good okay that's perfect For what concerns the artillery MIOs, I usually go for something like this. can periodically rearrange our militia a little bit. We want the militia to cover this uh, this river. We are not going to push them anyway. In this way we can also rearrange our offensive infantry to cover the part that we care about the most. Maybe this part will be edited out of the edited version because it's a bit longer. But again, uh, you can watch it in the unedited version in case you're struggling with this uh, with this war. You just adjust them a little bit. Uh, okay, something like this is fine. Generally speaking, it's better to keep pushing them, not give them any time uh, to recover. And then we need to try to encircle Buenos Aires, hopefully with a lot of their divisions in it. Okay, 
posição. Now, since we have a big advantage in terms of uh, units, divisions, uh, extending the front uh, is uh, convenient for us. So we can try to make the front as big as possible. If they do not stop us up here, we can go and get all of these uh, nice uh, victory points. Okay, now the priority is uh, getting Buenos Aires, uh, which can be a little tricky at times uh, if they have a lot of divisions in it. In this case, it looks like it uh, should be fine. Another important victory point to take is uh, down here. So if you can send a division uh, down here and take all of these victory points, that's going to help a lot. Uh, at this point, basically taking Buenos Aires should probably end the war. So let's see what happens. Sim, 
Also, feel free to let me know in the comments if you're struggling with this war. And I can make a dedicated video in which I cover it uh, even more in detail. Although, the unedited version should be enough. Done, Buenos Aires is down. Let's see if it is enough. It's not enough yet. See, that's why it's very important to send somebody down here to take this area. But overall, yeah, we're doing we're doing very well. Let's see if they are defending here, otherwise this probably will end the war. When you get free military factories, uh, which may vary a little bit depending on how the war is going for you. We're going to bring the support equipment uh, to 3. The artillery to 5. And then we're going to add uh, anti-air and we're going to bring it uh, to 3 as well. Okay, they are not defending there, which is uh, perfect, so this will end the war. And that's it. Argentina is down, we can take their navy. And we can take their land. So Argentina is now fully annexed. And this was perfect. Now we're a bit early. It may take you a little bit longer to finish this war. Actually this was uh, a pretty smooth one. Again uh, we can allow a few months range in here. Usually I finished this war around March 1938, so this was particularly good for us. In either way, after annexing Argentina, we're going to merge our armies again and we're going to change all of them to offensive divisions. We can also send them somewhere where we have supplies, uh, which is probably only the area of uh, Rio and Sao Paulo. And we're going to train them, of course. It's also maybe a good idea to save the game at this point. You did a good job with Argentina. Also, we can merge the new navy and we can stop uh, the naval invasion support in here. And at this point, I would suggest sending your navy down here because uh, next we are going to use it against uh, uh, Chile. At uh, 90 political power, we're going to pick the infantry expert. Now, this is particularly useful if you're still at war with uh, if you're still at war with Argentina, which may be the case at this point. We're going to pick it anyway for consistency between uh, strategies, and then we're going to pick uh, Brazil integral. Now I noticed that they made a change with the very last patch and that is uh, we can no longer recruit new militias in the areas we conquer. Uh, it used to be that uh, even in Uruguay and in Argentina we got new securing power missions. 
since we can no longer do that, we will need to adjust uh, slightly the strategy, which means we will also need to recruit some uh, divisions. Because here we can only make another two, which means we'll get to a total of uh, 20. We want a total of uh, 24 divisions. So we're going to start recruiting four offensive divisions. Now, at this point, uh, if something is different in your run, Consider the amount of divisions that you can that you can uh, recruit, uh, the new militias that you can get, uh, and then uh, recruit enough uh, divisions to get to a total of 24. 24 is what we want uh, in the end. I would like to tell you that the RNG in this run is over, but unfortunately we have a few more RNG moments. Meanwhile, we'll, uh, we're going to use our political power to recruit new militias. And uh, as we get them, uh, we change them into offensive immediately and we start uh, training them as well. Now at this point we are going to pick this focus and when we pick this focus we want to make some adjustments. Ideally at this point you should be done or almost done with Argentina. If you are late with Argentina this may be a bit of a problem because what we want to do at this point is we want to adjust our offensive divisions. Bringing them to a width of uh, 25, which means we need to add a, an artillery battalion and we need to add a two infantry battalion to the default template. So we want a, a template that looks like this. And uh, we need this because we need to get to uh, 200,000 fielded manpower by the time the focus is completed. In this case, we're already pretty close, but that's not always the case. Depending on how things are going, you may be a bit lower on uh, manpower at this point, and the, uh, you absolutely need 200,000 manpower in the field. In our case, we already achieved that, so we are fine. Okay, so at 100 political power, we are going to pick uh, improved worker conditions. Uh, we want to increase our stability as much as possible. As we finish the Recon Company research, we are going to add it to our template. The Cavalry Recon. And it is now time to get ready for Bolivia, which is going to be our next target, hopefully. Oh, 
coração. So for Bolivia, we are going to split our armies. We want a southern army to take care of the southern part of Bolivia. And we want a northern army. I split them into two groups of ten to take care of the northern part of Bolivia. Bolivia is very easy to capitulate, but there is some RNG and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Also, make sure you do not have uh, any planes, because sometimes you get some planes from Argentina and they are bad, but they are better than nothing, so we can assign these planes to our army. Go, Franco. Go, we can keep training our divisions in the meantime. Okay, after completing this focus uh, and uh, when picking the next one, which is the Guyana Crisis, uh, I would suggest making a save again. And the, re the reason is that uh, once we start uh, getting a claim on uh, Bolivia, by the way, let me mention this thing about the game. I do not mind the fact that uh, the UK and the Allies uh, guarantee countries you're fabricating on. That's the mechanic of the game, I understand it and I accept it. What I do not like is that they also get guarantees when uh, you're getting a claim through a focus. Uh, I don't think that's fair because there is no way for them to know what we are researching. We don't know their focuses. So why would they know what we are focusing on? And why would they know that we are going to get a claim? In any case, the point here is that uh, when we pick uh, the next focus, which is going to be securing the Amazon, someone is likely going to, be to guarantee Bolivia. In most scenarios, uh, and in the best case scenario, that someone is going to be Chile, and that's going to be great for us. But there are, uh, there are other situations in which it is not Chile, it is uh, the UK, or Chile and Colombia at the same time. And we do not want that, uh, that's not ideal for us. So in order to test that, uh, we can make a save now, and we can start a justification on Ireland, and we can see who is going to guarantee Ireland. Whoever is guaranteeing Ireland now is also going to guarantee Bolivia later, and if it is someone we don't like, we can try to change that. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it is Chile and Colombia. And that's not ideal, that's a bit of a problem, because Chile alone is great. But Chile and Colombia is going to delay us uh, too much uh, for World War II. Colombia is not difficult to Colombia is not difficult to take, uh, but the access to Colombia is terrible in here. So we're going to struggle a lot uh, before we capitulate them. So we don't want that. What are we going to do? We're going to cancel the justification on uh, Ireland. And uh, we're going to start uh, justifying on uh, other countries, uh, random countries like Nicaragua. Now, I don't like this. Uh, this is a bit like cheating the game. Uh, fake justifications just to waste uh, the guarantees uh, of the allies uh, um, or democratic countries. Uh, but as I said, I don't think it's fair that they can guarantee based on your focus. Uh, so uh, in this one case, I'm going to allow this uh, little exploit uh, to avoid uh, the guarantee. Unfortunately, it's not 100% consistent. So we'll need to see what happens, and that's why we made a save, uh, just in case we need to try it again. By the way, if you don't want to use this, uh, and Bolivia is guaranteed by someone you don't like, uh, either the UK or Chile and Colombia, you can uh, simply give up on uh, Bolivia and Chile, and uh, you can just go directly for Peru, which is going to be our next target. The main difference, other than not getting Bolivia and uh, Chile, 
is that you will need to fight a war against Peru from uh, this area here, which is not great, uh, rather than uh, being able to naval invade them uh, from Chile, which is much, much better. But other than that, uh, you can also follow the strategy if uh, Bolivia is guaranteed by Chile and uh, Colombia or by uh, the UK or someone else. Okay, so now let's see if we can manage to uh, waste uh, their... Wait, which one did I justify on? Wait a second, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, no one, probably. So let's justify on Nicaragua. You know, it's good that we have some extra political power because we can use it for uh, stuff like this. Now, another thing that we're going to do to try to avoid uh, the guarantees from people we don't like uh, is that uh, we're going to wait uh, 10 days uh, before picking the focus uh, to, deal to reduce the amount of time in which they can guarantee them. Also, uh, the Guyana crisis gives you some of this land, uh, sometimes all of it, sometimes some of it, sometimes none. It's a bit RNG again, but it's not particularly important for us. So let's see, we get the French territory and we get all of them. So this was particularly lucky. That's great. If you don't get all of them, that's the same. It's not going to affect the run uh, very much. Okay, we are at 10 days, so we can no longer delay this, unfortunately. We need to pick securing the Amazon, and we need to pray that everything goes well in terms of uh, guarantees. Actually, Nicaragua, Nicaragua was guaranteed by uh, Chile. Let's cancel, and let's start another justification on uh, Costa Rica as well. See if we can uh, uh, bait uh, the justification from Colombia and get rid of it uh, in time, hopefully so. At this point I would also suggest uh, you stop training your divisions because the war is going to start soon. Okay, it worked. We got our claim on Bolivia. Everything was fine. Nobody guaranteed them. Actually, it's slightly better when Chile alone guarantees them, but uh, we are happy with nobody. We declare war to um, Bolivia right away. Let's see, by the way, if... Uh, Somebody, yeah, see, it was a good idea to justify on uh, Costa Rica because we baited uh, Colombia's guarantee. Otherwise, probably Colombia would have guaranteed Bolivia, which is again uh, not ideal. So, this is a bit cheesy, but it is something we, we have to do at this point of the run if we don't want to run into too much trouble. Now, the other thing is uh, next, uh, we also want to get a claim on uh, Chile, which is going to be preemptive strike. Uh, uh, again, we're going to use the same strategy, so we're going to wait for 10 days uh, and then we're going to start justifying on other countries meanwhile, uh, so that uh, uh, if anyone else uh, wants to get involved, uh, hopefully they will not do it uh, with Chile. So let's start a justification of, uh, on uh, Cuba. Meanwhile, uh, we wait. And uh, well, meanwhile, we destroy, hopefully, Bolivia. So let's go after Bolivia. Need to keep an eye on the focus because uh, we do need to pick it in uh, in ten days. At this point, uh, by the way, we can also pick uh, the military theorist. We can pick uh, the ground support. Uh, and we can pick uh, the last uh, spirit uh, up here. Smoke and fire.
Also, it may be worth uh, making a save because we can try to work around uh, Chile as well. So let's make a save at this point. If you run out of 60% uh, provinces, you will need to build some factories in the 40% ones. There is nothing we can do about it. Looks like no one is uh, in the mood of uh, annoying us with guarantees at the moment, so that would be great, but let's see what happens. Alright, 10 days, so we do need to pick a preemptive strike now, and hope that nothing happens in the next 10 days, or 20 days. If you get uh, free military factories, uh, you can uh, increase the production of uh, trains uh, to one. We bring the artillery to 15, uh, but we also lower it, uh, its priority to the least important one. And then we're also going to add, uh, we're also going to add uh, anti-air to our offensive divisions. Okay, Bolivia is uh, taken. Bolivia is a very easy war. We're going to annex them. And then we're going to prepare for uh, Chile. Chile is also very easy, but uh, we need to split our army a little bit. So we're going to keep uh, part of the army here in the north to take uh, this part of Chile. We're going to send the other half of the army to take the southern part of Chile, of course. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if Chile guarantees Bolivia, you will start a war against both at the same time. And that's totally fine. I would suggest ignoring Chile completely in that case, which means they will take most of Argentina while you are taking care of Bolivia. But they don't have divisions, so while their divisions will be fighting in Argentina, or will be conquering Argentina, you can just sneak behind them and take the victory points and just end the war. That's going to be very easy. Make sure that they go there as fast as possible, because we are pretty far. We got our claim on Chile. Nobody guaranteed them. Let's see if anybody bought our uh, bait on Cuba. No, nobody did. But we can cancel the justification. We don't really need these claims. So at this point, uh, we can take Chile as well. Declare war to them as fast as possible. Declare war on them as fast as possible. Because uh, uh, the longer you wait, the more chances there is uh, somebody guarantees them. So let's go right away. As for the focus, we go for the Panama push. Pronto. 
See, our, posi our divisions were not in position. Posi <laughs> Sorry. Our divisions were not in position down here, so Chile advanced a little bit, uh, but that's really not a problem. After taking the northern part of uh, Chile, if needed, uh, you can plan a naval invasion from here to take uh, the area of uh, Santiago. I'm not sure it's going to be needed in this case because it looks like they are going down very fast, so probably we don't need to do that. So this guy may be a bit in trouble. Continue in front! In position! Ah, uh, you know what, we're going to do it anyway, just uh, to show you, and then we never know, maybe maybe it will actually be helpful, so I'll create another army of uh, 10 here. That will show you what kind of uh, naval invasion we're going to plan. Uh, now, these harbors are not always here, but usually this one is, so we can start planning a naval invasion of uh, this area, just in case. Of course, we want to get uh, some victory points, that's the main uh, purpose. And then we're going to send our fleet, uh, which we positioned uh, carefully in the area, we're going to send it up here. At this point, you can use uh, your army experience, so whenever you have doctrines available, you can pick them. But anyway, we're not in a hurry to take down uh, Chile, although ideally we want to do it before the Panama push is uh, done. This may actually be the end of the war. So my tooltip is bugged, so we cannot know that. Okay, that's done. Perfect. So, nice. We got uh, Chile as well. Of course, we're going to take their navy and we're going to annex them. And now it's time to get ready for Peru. Peru is by, by far the toughest uh, of our opponents in uh, South America. So we need to pay attention to this next war. So let's start by getting in position. I will use the larger army for the main front against Peru. 
And then we are going to use uh, the army of 10 uh, to prepare a naval invasion of uh, Peru. The naval invasion will be decisive, uh, but it is a tricky one. So we want to send uh, two divisions here. We're going to send two to Lima. Another two here. Another two here. And the last two here. And ideally we want to disembark at least with some of them and help the other army. Otherwise pushing in the mountains against the, uh, Chile, uh, the per Peruvian army is going to be pretty tough. Let's make sure that they get there as fast as possible. And let's prepare our navy. From Antofagasta. Keep the most trained units uh, in the uh, naval invasion army because uh, they are going to be the most decisive ones in this push. Ah, by the way, um, guarantees are no longer a problem because uh, Peru is fascist, so nobody is going to guarantee them. And our next target, uh, which is uh, Venezuela, is also fascist, so we don't need to worry about guarantees anymore. The guarantee uh, issue is only with Bolivia and Chile. Peru has an insanely large army for their size, so that's why they are particularly tough. Also, that's why we brought uh, the size of our army, the combat width, uh, to 25, uh, because uh, the hardest pushes we, were, we are going to have to do in South America are in the mountains against uh, Peru, for sure. If you can get to a full planning, that's going to be very beneficial. And depending on how fast you are with Chile, you may be able to or not. Uh, you can also use uh, the Staff Office Plan command. Okay, we got uh, our claims up here, so it's time for the war against Peru. Let's make a save. Because as I mentioned, uh, uh, this war is by far the toughest we're going to fight in uh, South America, so let's go. We're going to start uh, our offensive and then we're going to start uh, with naval invasion support, uh, our naval invasion as well. I see some green numbers, that's already good. But I'm pretty sure we are going to struggle in this area here. In any case, the more we keep them busy on the front, uh, the more likely is uh, our naval invasion to succeed. So that's good. But see, they, they even have divisions to protect their harbors. It's quite incredible. Okay, at least they didn't have divisions in here, so that's going to be beneficial for us.
I must be honest, it's going uh, fairly well, but I'm a bit worried about these five divisions in Cusco. By the way, at this point we are saving on uh, political power because with the next focus we are going to be able to core a lot of nice stuff. Uh, unfortunately, after getting Chile you always get uh, this uh, event, which is not good of course. I would suggest picking the, the one that reduces the base stability the least, uh, because we really need the base stability. No, I don't usually get uh, free dockyards at this point of the run, but it depends a bit on uh, what Chile did, and it looks like they built a lot of harbors in this run, so we got free dockyards. In any case, I would suggest using them on uh, destroyers, not uh, on more uh, early heavy ships. Unfortunately, against Peru, it happens to get a bit stuck, like in this case, especially when they have so many divisions in one uh, slot in the mountains. One tile in the mountains. Estou pronto! Em posição! Em posição! Tô, 
Posição! Finally, hopefully, you know, check, but it should be over for two. Okay, so it's finally down. It took a bit longer than usual, but that's okay. So we're going to take Peru. Now we need to get ready for Venezuela as fast as possible, because again, we are slightly late. March is okay, but uh, a bit earlier would have been better. So for Venezuela, we're going to use uh, a, a normal push from here and then a naval invasion with the usual army. For the naval invasion, we can start from here. We're going to send uh, two divisions here. Two of them here. Two of them here. Here. And here. And I forgot this one, which was supposed to go here. Okay, and then of course we need to adjust uh, the positioning of our navy. So we are going to move uh, the navy to this harbor. We need to make sure that everyone is uh, using uh, trains uh, and going there as fast as possible. Because again, we are a bit late here. Okay, however, on the other hand, we completed uh, this very nice uh, focus, which means uh, we will soon be able to uh, reintegrate uh, or core all of the stuff that we conquered in South America, which is, of course, amazing. Before that, we're going to pick uh, the next focus, which is going to be Establish Berlin Accords. And once again, there is a bit of RNG because sometimes the German Reich denies uh, these requests. This is mostly going to have an impact in, uh, on, on uh, how much war score we get at the end of World War II. And as you can see, we have quite a lot of stuff to integrate. Luckily, we have the political power to do most of it, so that's great. And by the way, from now on, we are going to use our political power to keep uh, integrating new stuff. Ideally, you want to do it in the order of uh, richness of the land, but I cannot be bothered, so I just click from the top. Oh, 
Since we're late, I'm going to use. I'm um, not. Never mind, because we don't have uh, the leader. Let's just do it. Uh, how long is he sick for? Ten days. Reposição. Reposição. Companhia. Now, when you get uh, free civilian, fa uh, sorry, when you get free military factories, uh, we are going to increase the production of anti-air to five. Support equipment uh, to five, uh, trucks uh, to two. Infantry, infantry, infantry equipment uh, to 15 and everything else will go to uh, improved artillery from now on. Okay, the fact that we completed the focus without other messages means we joined uh, the Axis, uh, which is uh, great. And now we just need to take Venezuela. We're going to start uh, the naval invasion of uh, Venezuela and the war against Venezuela right away. Also, uh, the focus gives us some nice uh, political power, which we can use uh, immediately to integrate more stuff. And again, Venezuela will be a bit of a struggle at first, but it's going to be fine in the end. Uh, the naval invasion is going to help uh, massively. Pronto! Estou pronto! A cobra vai fumar! Sim, senhor! Em 
posição. A cobra vai fumar. Sim, senhor. Continue em frente. Sim, senhor. Okay, Venezuela is uh, down, not the smoothest, uh, but it went all right. Now let's uh, next them as well. And now we have a little time to prepare for World War II. The main thing we want to do is uh, we want to send our divisions uh, to Germany and we want them to help against Poland. Now at this point the amount of divisions that you can send to Europe depends on uh, how many of these territories you got from uh, France, the Netherlands and the UK. because. Uh, if they have three of them, if you didn't get any, you are going to have to live here about uh, 10 divisions. In our case, we got all of them, which means uh, the main issue is going to come from here and from here. But we don't need that many divisions for that. So I think we can afford to send most of our divisions to Europe. Of course, the more divisions you send to Europe, the better it is, the more war score you are going to get. So ideally, we want to send most of them to Europe. We are going to leave uh, maybe three divisions down here. But in any case, after taking Venezuela, we're also going to start recruiting another army of uh, 18 divisions. Or, well, ideally 24, but uh, we cannot get 24 right away. If possible, if you can, uh, depending on how the war goes against Venezuela, if you can get this army in time, uh, it would be better to send all of your divisions and then just use this army to defend the mainland here. We also need to make some adjustments to our divisions. We're going to bring the combat width uh, to uh, 30 by adding another artillery battalion and another infantry battalion. We're also going to start creating an agency right away. And we are going to send our fleet uh, to Germany as well, here in particular. So I'm going to bet that we are going to be able to get our second army in time and I want to send the entire army to the border with Poland. I want to try to maximize our war score. So at this point, depending on the timing, you may be able to send the army to the border with Poland and help against Poland. Or if Germany did not accept your request to join the Axis, you will be able to join the Axis as the war tension increases and you will be able to help against the Netherlands and uh, Belgium. But for now, since we were fairly lucky under that point of view, we can send our army at the border with uh, Poland and we can prepare them to push against Poland and get us some nice uh, war score. Also, Germany is sending us some divisions, so maybe they will help defending these, uh, these areas.
Now, with the naval agent, no, sorry, with the intelligence agency, what we want to research is the naval department right away, and we are going to send our spy to the UK to increase the chances of uh, pulling out a successful sea lion later in the war. But after that, I suggest you get all of the departments and a couple of anti-partisan to get uh, the um, second spy. Also, we can train uh, the navy and we can train uh, the army for a little bit. In this case, it's for about one month. Now I can see that we can force deploy our second army in here. I'm going to do that because I want some divisions at least to protect the border. So they will not be trained. That's not ideal, but uh, it is uh, what we can afford at the moment. So we can split them into two groups. Send one at the border with the Netherlands here and one at the border with the UK here. It's okay, they probably cannot push us anyway because uh, it's uh, a re straight crossing in, in the end. And after doing that, we can also start recruiting some new ones. Uh, so we had 18. We need another 6 uh, to get to a full army of 20, which is our goal. Go, pronto! Okay, we got our spy. Let's send the spy to the UK. I would send it uh, to this area, not to London. Okay, it is time to stop uh, training our armies uh, because uh, we'll be soon involved uh, in uh, World War II also. Do not forget to stop training your navy as well, otherwise uh, it will end very badly for it. And that's uh, a, also a good time for a last save before World War II. Okay, as soon as Germany starts the war against Poland, we want to join them, so we offer to join war, they will accept, and then we start pushing immediately. We want to get as much war score as possible uh, in this war. Uh, so these guys still have some time here, I don't think we can push them, but we can try now. So we can just, uh, we can just wait here, I guess. But here it's very important that we deal as much combat damage as possible, so we attack all the time. We don't need to conquer land, we just need to fight, fight, fight. Also, let, let me get some different uh, stuff. This one is okay. Keep in mind that whatever you conquer here is going to go to Germany. So what we want here is fighting, not conquering. Oh, 
always remember the air spirits before you take always remember the air spirits before you take the doctrines let's see ah damn it sucks that we cannot see the worst car until the end oh well, that's okay this is a very annoying bug i don't know why they haven't fixed it yet oh whatever I may reload the game actually to fix it. Yeah, that's a good idea because uh, at this point reloading the game will not cause any issues. Uh, so let's do it to fix this problem. Okay, now we can see the, the war score, which is uh, absolutely great at the moment. Uh, 36. Uh, we're very happy with that war score, so let's keep going. Again, again. We want to fight as much as possible here. And Poland is uh, down and let's see the situation. The situation is absolutely amazing at the moment. Keep in mind that uh, with the very last uh, patch they fixed the fact that Italy doesn't join the war. Italy should now join the war as we attack France or as France goes down, I'm not entirely sure. So we will need to split some of the war score with Italy while uh, after the DLC but before the latest patch Italy did not join the war at all. Okay now we need to get ready for the Netherlands as fast as possible so let's prepare our divisions there. Okay, almost ready. Let's get the stuff off his plan. If we can get some uh, more damage, it's going to be beneficial for us. Also, just in case uh, Germany doesn't attack the Netherlands, sometimes they don't for some reason. I'm going to fabricate a claim. So we can trigger it uh, if uh, Germany gets uh, bugged uh, for some reason. Let's see, what did they attack Belgium?
Okay, as you can see, uh, for some reason Germany was not attacking the Netherlands, but uh, we can fabricate claims very quickly as a fascist country. We're going to do the same on Belgium, just in case Germany again uh, does their own stuff. And uh, getting a claim on the Netherlands also ensures that we can attack uh, as fast as possible, so that's uh, pretty convenient. Although Germany does need to join our war. Perfect. Okay, that's great. And the Netherlands, the, the Netherlands are down. Now let's get ready for Belgium. I really don't think there is any chance that we can fight the UK here, but we can attack them to get some more war score maybe. Let's get at least uh, the planning bonus. Okay, now Belgium, uh, Germany was faster, so let's join them right away. Oh, whatever. And let's go immediately. We are not going to wait for anything here. We want uh, combat damage and war score. Belgium is already down. Luxembourg we're not going to care about, but we're going to start pushing into France uh, immediately. At uh, 75 uh, political power, we can also switch the industrial concern uh, to central bank, uh, which is much uh, better. Sorry, at 85, not 75 political power. Never mind. Let's see if we can do something here to increase our war score a bit more. Yeah, it looks like we're doing well. And Paris is down, France uh, will go down uh, pretty soon. France is down as well. Our war score is still pretty good. Uh, again, Italy joined, so we are going to need to share some uh, with them. But we're still pretty happy with what we got. Now! The decisive part, uh, the decisive part of World War II, as in uh, every run. But uh, of course, with Brazil, it's a bit tougher because we don't have a strong navy. So we need to pull off a sea lion, and there are two ways of doing that. Uh, you can go from Dunkirk and uh, go for the southern part of the UK, or you can go for from this place and go for the central part of the UK. Uh, both are viable options, but I usually prefer to go from Dunkirk, despite the fact that from here it's usually considered a bit easier. I find it that the Royal Navy intercepts you more often in this area than they do in this area. By the way, I didn't pick the central bank. At 85 uh, political power, you can pick the central uh, bank, industrial concern, to reduce the consumer good factories by, 20, uh, by 15%, which at this point of the game is pretty good. But uh, why can I not pick it? 
Good. The bugs. The bugs in this game. Whatever. So let's uh, plan our invasion of the UK. I'm going to send two divisions here. Two of them here. Another two here. Another two here. And another two here. May I know why I cannot pick this focus? Very weird. Let's try to make this game not bugged again. doesn't work. What the hell? But not blind us to the fact that what happened in France and Belgium is a colossal military disaster. Now it worked. Uh, so uh, I ha I was struggling to pick the Banco do Brasil. It seems to be a bug, but apparently if you remove the other one first and then you pick it, uh, it works. In any case, if you can pick it. It does give you a lot more uh, factories. Oh, we also need to get ready with our navy and we want to send it to Dunkirk. It may be worth making a save at this point of the run, just in case, you know, Sea Lion is always Sea Lion. Let's see what the situation would be at the moment. Uh, the situation would be pretty bad, uh, but why, why don't you engage? Strike force. Uh, see, we're actually very close already, 48%. Uh, so I think uh, in a little bit we'll be able to get it without uh, without issues. Okay, here we are, not able to push them, but that's still uh, land combat damage, so it's still good for the worker. Casualties are also good for the worker, so actually we want to lose some men in this war. Oh, this was bugged too? Okay, interesting. So, reloading the game fixed the, this thing too. I think with the last patch notes, uh, I, I think with the latest patch they broke more stuff than they fixed actually. But apparently now we can make more uh, of these integralist rallies. Uh, not that we need them particularly, so I'm not gonna use them, but okay. Ah no, maybe wait, maybe it's just because we cored the land. That would make sense. Why are you guys Okay, so we are ready for the naval invasion. We need to see if we get uh, the naval superiority or not. We get it right away. Look at this. It's absolutely perfect. No problems at all. I'll still make a save just in case, uh, but as you can see, with our strategy, especially with the uh, strategy for building uh, uh, heavy ships, empty heavy ships, we can easily get the naval superiority in the channel. So, let's go. another master class on defending from the UK I think it's another master master class on how to defend your core land amazing job UK amazing job so actually at this point uh, we do not want uh, Germany to get in the UK so if possible we want to stop by uh, pressing here it's from the supply map mode if we do this uh, the, the allies Germany our allies will not be able to 
join us in the UK, which is better. We don't want them. We want all of our juicy work, work all of the juicy war score for ourselves. And what we want to do is we want to push uh, right away. Also, I'm going to start making some uh, convoys. Now, hopefully, the UK will send some divisions to protect the mainland, which uh, would be good uh, because uh, in that way we can get some war score. I love how Churchill is talking about defending the UK to the last man and they literally don't have divisions in the UK at all. Yeah, the resolve of Brittany. This guy must be churching. If necessary, alone. That's him. Technically, if you wanted, you could extend the world a little bit now by stopping the uh, access to send reinforcements uh, and then you just let uh, more of the UK divisions come and kill them. They actually prefer to end the war faster and we have stuff to do after this war, so... We can, uh, we na we can accept a slightly lower uh, war score for a faster war. We actually don't need that much stuff in the this conference, but I will show you in detail what we what we're going to uh, what we're going to get. Let's give a look on the war score. Meanwhile, look at this. This is absolutely amazing. This is actually better than usual. We're very very happy with this. Oh, we even managed to push them here. Nice. Okay, I think the war is about uh, to end uh, probably as soon as you, as we get Newcastle. So I always suggest making a save just before you end World War II. Just in case, you know, you mess up the Peace Conference, you need to do it again. Peace Conference. 
So just before you end the war, I would suggest uh, making a claim on uh, Vichy France. And one on uh, Spain as well. Because uh, in this way we get them a lot faster. If you wait uh, until after the war, they will take a lot uh, longer to get uh, done. Okay, the UK is down. We finished. Oh, this is really amazing, guys. I did not expect this. It never happened in my test runs. So we finished with a higher war score than Germany. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I cannot guarantee that this is going to happen all the time. This probably was particularly lucky. Uh, actually, the war score we aim for is about 30%. We would be more than satisfied with 30%. In this case, we got more than Germany. It's, uh, it's really, really amazing. Now, uh, before we end uh, this uh, tutorial, this is not the end of the run, but it is the end of uh, this first video tutorial. Let me talk about the Peace Conference very, very briefly. Okay, so in the Peace Conference, first of all, we're going to take everything in uh, South America as uh, annexation here, take state, uh, because we can core this stuff. I'm not saying that this stuff is particularly good, uh, but we can core it, so we're going to take it. And that uh, includes uh, the Bahamas, uh, but not uh, the uh, Bermuda. It includes uh, the Auckland, or better, Las Malvinas, and South Georgia, but not uh, uh, Pecairn Island. In any case, after doing that, uh, we are going to also take uh, uh, Aquitaine and uh, this part of uh, the Pyrenees. And then we're going to puppet some strategic uh, provinces or regions like uh, Gibraltar, Suez, and Singapore. And then we're going to puppet Normandy, Loire, Poitou, Bourgogne, Champagne, and you can already see what I'm planning to do in here. But I'm not going to say it now. Then we're going to take as much of the UK as uh, possible in this first, uh, first uh, turn of the conference. And in the next ones, we're going to take all of the UK, but not, uh, or better, all of England, but not, uh, not Scotland. So we are going to have to fight uh, Germany for some of this stuff. And we're going to do that. So we take uh, England all the way up to uh, here. At this point, if you can, if you have some spare points, like in my case, you can also take some uh, resource-rich regions like these ones. Uh, especially we are going to need oil, so these ones are particularly convenient. Uh, aluminum is also very good. And uh, we can maybe get some additional oil from uh, stuff like these. Uh, not very expensive ones. We want to keep the points mostly for, for the Navy, the Royal Navy. So I guess we're happy with these. We're going to have to fight Germany until they give us everything we want. Okay, Germany accepted uh, all of our requests. Now let's pass uh, a few turns until they are completely done. And then let's make sure that uh, the allies are completely deleted. So in this case, see the Germans forgot to take this stuff. If we don't take them, uh, the allies will still uh, be around and we don't want them. Let's puppet everything they didn't take. That was uh, from uh, the UK, from France. And then I would suggest, uh, just in case, checking the large ones like Australia. Canada seems fine. Let's check India. See, in India they forgot a lot of stuff here. But we are going to need to take this stuff, sadly. Otherwise, India is going to be around and we don't want that. Although I really wanted to take the Royal Navy and uh, this is a bit of a problem. Why is Germany not using their 5000 points uh, to take uh, uh, India is uh, something I'm not really sure about. I guess we face uh, the choice of uh, leaving India around. Uh, well, this is only a problem if we are going for a world conquest, to be honest. So we're not going to care about India. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, uh, not care about India.
Let's see if we get some spare points at the end. We're going to take India as well. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, resource rights uh, and uh, war reparations from everyone. We puppeted. So mostly the UK. France. And uh, the... No, not the Netherlands. The Dutch East Indies. Uh, British Malaya. Okay, what we want to do next, uh, and this is probably the most important part other than the territories I mentioned, is uh, we want to take the Royal Navy, ideally entirely. And then we can also take the navies of uh, everyone else. And at this point, if there was something left that you can take, uh, you can go on and do it. In our case, uh, India was not taken entirely, so let's see which part of India can be more beneficial for us. I think this one's pretty nice. Maybe these, some, oh no wait, some um, tanks and would actually be good. Well, I think we are done. Uh, we are pretty satisfied with what we got in the peace conference, so let's end it. And this is now the situation. We have 224 factories, uh, which is not bad at all. And uh, we are ready to face the next challenge of the game, which is going to be the Axis. Uh, we prepared for the Axis. The Axis is going to be a tough war. This is not uh, an easy war to fight, uh, so it will be covered uh, in the next video. For this uh, tutorial, that's all. Uh, guys, uh, this uh, really took uh, a huge, a stupidly high amount of time. Probably too much. I spent too many days working on this strategy uh, because of all of the inconsistencies I talked about, uh, because of the RNG in Argentina and then Bolivia, the guarantees. I tried to find uh, the most consistent and effective uh, strategy for this run uh, possible. So if you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to like, uh, Subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. Uh, it's really, really important for the channel, but also for me because uh, this was a lot of work. And other than that, if uh, anything doesn't go right in your run, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will try to help you as much as possible. And, and also do not miss uh, the next uh, chapter of this uh, run because the, the war against the Axis is going to be a lot of fun. I will include uh, a link to the playlist uh, in the description of the video. I will update the description to include uh, the next video as well. So make sure not to miss it. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.